Okay, so now we're going to do the calculator section of the April 2018 test. Let's do number one. If 6 times 2k equals 36, what is the value of 4k minus 2? So in order to figure this problem out, we need to figure out what is the value of k. So we know that 6 times 2k equals 36. So that means that if we divide both sides by 6, 2k equals 6. So k equals 3. 4 times 3 is 12 minus 2 equals 10. So our answer is B10. Number 2, the number of people who rode a certain bus each day of the week is shown in the table below. Which of the following is, based, is true based on these data? So uh, A is false because the bus did not have the most riders on Tuesday. B is false false because we have examples that disprove it c same thing as b and d the two days with the fewest number of riders were saturday and sunday well those are indeed the days with the fewest number of riders so d is our answer whoops there we go Okay, number three, a physician prescribes a treatment in which a patient takes two teaspoons of medication every six hours for five days. According to the prescription, how many teaspoons of the medication should the patient take in a 24-hour period? So here, all we need to do is set up a proportion. Um, so we're going to do two teaspoons over six hours equals X teaspoons over 24 hours. If we cross multiply, we'll get 6x equals 48. So x equals 8. So that is our answer, C8. Number four, 100 park district members will be selected to participate in a survey about selecting a new park district coordinator. Which of the following methods of choosing the 100 members would result in a random sample of members in the park district. So the big thing here is you need to make sure that whatever sample they take is randomized. In other words, that there isn't any bias with the sample that is taken. Answer choice A is obtain a numbered list of all park district members. Use a random number generator to select 100 members from the list. Give the survey to those 100 members. Well, this is randomized, so this is fine so far. So far, A is good. B, obtain a list of all park district members sorted alphabetically. Give the survey to the first 100 members of the list. This one's not so great because this one biases the towards the first half of the list, basically. The first however many members, or the people who come earlier in the alphabet. So B is no bueno. C is basically similar to B because it prioritizes the first however many people who volunteer it prevents it from being random and d is basically the same thing first 100 members on the list no good you have to randomize it from everyone so a is our answer number five which of the following expressions is equivalent to the expression above okay so let's make the expression above look closer look more similar to the answer choices so let's distribute the stuff out and combine terms. 2x times x squared is 2x to the third. Then plus 2x plus 2x squared minus 2x. So then we get the 2x's cancel out. So we're left with 2x to the third plus 2x squared, which is answer choice C. Number six, if x plus three equals two x minus two, what is the value of x minus four? Well, so to get the value of x minus four, we need to get the value of x. So let's figure out what x is. So x plus three equals two x minus two. Let's combine some like terms. Uh, let's add the two to the, each side, subtract x from each side. So we're gonna get five equals x. So, but we're not done yet x minus 4 is 5 minus 4, which is 1. Dunzo. Okay, number 7. The functions f and g are defined by f of x equals 4x and g of x equals x squared 
for what value of x does f of x minus g of x equal 4? Okay, so basically the question is asking for what value if you do 4x minus x squared do you get 4? And there's a few ways to do this. You could factor this out or you can just plug the answer choices in uh, whichever you prefer. Let's let's do the algebraic method because you can plug numbers in all the time. So if we do this algebraically, let's set this up as a quadratic that's set equal to zero. So that would be uh, x squared uh, minus 4x plus 4 equals 0. If we factor this out, this will be x minus 2 times x minus 2. So x equals 2 is our answer. And if we want to double check, we could plug it back in. Um, and if you do that, it does indeed work because 8 minus 4 equals 4. Number 8, the function g is defined as g of x equals 2x over 3 plus 3. What is the value of g of negative 30? For this, literally all they're saying is replace all of the x's with negative 30 and figure out what answer you get when you do that. So g of negative 30 equals 2 times negative 30 divided by 3 plus 3. This equals 20 plus, uh, this equals, uh, let's see, negative 20 plus 3, which is equal to negative 17. So C is our answer. Number 9, okay, a bunch of information. Which of the following is closest to the difference between the actual number of home runs and the number predicted by the line of best fit in 2003? Well, in 2003, the actual number appears to be 5,220. I'm sorry, 5,250, roughly speaking. The number predicted by the line of best fit is 4,500. And the difference is 750. Great. Okay, so now we have a bunch of questions that come from this little graph they've given us. Between which two consecutive months shown did the average price of one metric ton of oranges decrease the most? So basically, we, we want to see literally where did it decrease the most. March to April, it increased, so that's no bueno. May to June, it appears to have decreased a little bit. June to July, it decreased by more, so May to June was out. And then July to August, it decreased by less, so C is our answer. Number 11, which of the following is closest to the median price in dollars of the seven recorded prices of one metric ton of tons of oranges? So the median price is basically the price that's in the middle when you line the numbers up from least to greatest. So let's see. The, so the least, so how many points do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points. So we want to see where is the fourth highest point. So February, is the, so February and August are lowest, the lowest two. Then comes July. March appears to be the fourth highest or the fourth lowest, which is about 808. So that is our median. Number 12, in 2014, the average price of one metric ton of oranges decreased by 2.36%, which is the following is closest to the price of one metric ton of oranges in January 2018. 14. So the price decreased by 2.3% from January to February. So if in February it's about 7, it looks like it's about 765-ish, that means it should have been a little bit higher than that. So that basically looks like it'll be closest to about 770. So B is going to be our answer. Number 13. The table above shows the distribution of single story and two story houses in the neighborhood classified according to rooftop. If one of the houses is selected at random, what is the probability that it will be a single story house with a slate roof? So we have a total of 
the way you do probability is you take your desired outcomes over your total number of outcomes. So we have a total of four, let's see, 48 houses that we're looking at. The probability that it will be a single story house with a slate roof. That's four out of 48. And look, that is answer choice A. Beautiful. 15. The load capacity of a certain washing machine is 12 pounds. What is the approximate load capacity of the same washing machine in kilograms? And then they give us a conversion. So we can set up a proportion. One kilogram over 2.2 pounds equals X kilograms over 12 pounds. So then if we set this up as an equation, that'll be 2.2 X equals 12. So X is going to equal 5.4. Number 16, triangles ABC and DEF are similar. How much longer than segment EF is segment DE? So if the triangles are similar, that means all of their tr uh, sides, all of the respective sides, are in proportion. So what I mean by that is, if in the big triangle, AC is 20, and the little triangle DF is 5, it's 1 fourth of 20. So that means that each other side is also going to be 1 fourth of the respective amount. So DE, for example, would be 29 over 4. EF would be 21 over um, so EF compared to e, uh, DE, let's see, um, second EF, then segment DE. Okay, so just subtract them. 29 over 4 minus 21 over 4 equals 8 over 4, which equals 2. That's it. Number 17, which of the following is true about the standard deviation of the two data sets in the table above? So here's the thing with standard deviation and it keeps appearing over and over and over again. As far as this test goes, all that standard deviation means is basically how, it basically means how much do the numbers deviate from the mean? How far away are they from the mean? So a set of data points has a higher standard deviation if more of its points are further away from the mean. So the closer the values are to the mean, the lower the standard deviation is. So for this, really it would be helpful to see basically roughly what the means are, okay? So looking at them, let's see if we can tell. We can use a calculator to figure this out. Um, but it's, it's never going to be an equal standard deviation because the difficulty of calculating the actual standard deviation is beyond the scope of this test. So let's do that. So let's see what the mean is for the data set A. Roughly speaking, it's like 26 plus 40 plus like 50, plus 62, plus 73, plus 118, plus 126 equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that appears to be about 82,000. And for the second set, it's going to be 55 plus 173 plus 300 plus 358 plus 456 plus 603 equals divided by 6. It appears to be about 329. So, uh, D is not going to be our answer. C is not going to be our answer. Um, looks like uh, the data points in set B tend to be further away from the mean, right? Because it's on the order of like hundreds of thousands. So that means that the standard deviation of set B is larger than the standard deviation of set A. 
So A is the answer. 18, okay. If an object is dropped, if an object dropped towards the surface of the Earth has a velocity of 58.8 meters per second after T seconds, what would be the velocity of the same object dropped towards the surface of the Earth? Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Sorry. Number 18. If an object dropped towards the surface of the Earth has a velocity of 58.8 meters per second after T seconds, what would be the velocity of the same object dropped toward the surface of Mars after T seconds, ignoring the effect of air resistance? Okay. So let's see. Um, so they've given us a formula. Let's use the formula. The formula is V equals 9.8 T. So if V equals 58.8, that means T is going to equal 9.8. Six. Okay, so t equals six. Add. Oops, where did we go? Let's let's go back to where we needed to go. And here we are. Okay, so t has to equal six. Um, okay, so we're looking for a value that's between 14.8 and 29.6, right in between them, which is going to be answer choice B. And we looked right in between them because 6 is right in between 4 and 8. Number 19, in the xy plane, the graph of line L has slope 3, case parallel to line L, contains the point 310, which the following is an equation of line K. Okay, so... Now, if line K is parallel to line L, it means it's the same slope, right? Because parallel lines never touch, they have the same slope. So it's gonna have a slope of three. So we know that A and B are gone. And now we can just plug the point into the answer choices. If we plug it into C, does 10 equal three times three plus seven? Nope, because that equals 16. So D is our answer. And if you plug it into D, three times three is 9 plus 1 is 10, so we know D is going to be our answer. Number 20, a certain colony of bacteria began with one cell and the population doubled every 20 minutes. What was the population after two hours? Just do it out. Um, after 20 minutes, it's at 2. After 40 minutes, it's at 4. After an hour, it's at 8. Hour 20, 16. Hour 40, 32. Two hours... 64. Done. I'm sorry, I might have said 42, I meant 32, and then 64. Okay. Number 21, the circumference of Earth is estimated to be 40,030 kilometers at the equator. That is large. Which of the following best approximates, approximates the diameter of the Earth's equator? Okay, well... What information are we given? We're given the circumference. We're told to get the diameter. Well, if we're given the circumference, what's the circumference formula? It is C equals 2 pi r. So that means that 40,030 equals 2 pi r kilometers. So r equals, let's figure, let's get a rough calculation. 40,030 40, divided by 2 equals divided by 3.14159. Okay, so we've got about 6371. That's the radius. So the diameter is going to be double that. So the diameter is going to be 12,742. 
Now, we're looking for miles, though, right? Because th that's what the question is asking us for. And this is in kilometers. So now we, we need to convert this to miles. So we can do this by doing one kilometer over 0.62 miles equals 12,742 kilometers over x miles. And then solve for x. So times 0.62 equals great, which is 7,900 roughly. Okay, so now we are number 22. The budget for school band was 8,000 in 2010. The budget decreased by 15% from 2010 to 2011 and then increased by 22% from 2011 to 2012. What is the budget in 2012? So basically, when you want to increase by something by some percent, like let's say 15, let's say, or basically when you want to decrease something by some percent, like 15%, what you would do is you would multiply that number by 0.85 because 0.85 is 15% less than 100. If you want to increase it by something, you do the opposite. So like if you want to increase it by 22%, you would multiply it by 1.22 because that's 22% higher than 100. So we had some budget and we took it, we multiplied it by 1.15, or by, sorry, we multiplied by 0.85, then by 1.22, and that's it. And that it's, we started with 8,000. So, and then is that all we did? Yep, that is all we did. So that answer choice is going to be B. Cool. Okay, 23 and 24 refer to this information, so we're going to have to go back and forth a little bit. Uh, 23, an equation of the boundary line between the and the lucite and silimanite. Yeah, fun words. Regions is approximated by the equation above. What is the meaning of the t-intercept over this line? When they say t-intercept, it's like the same thing as the y-intercept. Okay, it's the so when you think of this, think of what a y-intercept is, right? It's basically where your graph starts, where your equation starts. It's where it starts when uh, x equals zero. Is it the maximum temperature? Nope, no bueno. It is the temperature at which these things can form when there's no pressure applied. Okay, when something is equal to zero, possibly. It is an increased number of degrees. Nope, it's an intercept. It's not going to be. It's not a slope. It is decreased. Same reason why C is wrong. So B is going to be our answer. Okay, number twenty-four. Which of the following system of inequalities best describes the region where silimanite? I don't even. I still don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Can form. So let's see. Well, we know a couple things. If we look at this graph, we see that. But silimanite is between these two lines, one with a positive slope and one with a negative slope, and it lies somewhere between them. So we know that the answer we pick has to have the inequality signs flipped in bit from one equate from one inequality to the other. So in A they face the same way, so A doesn't work, and D they face the same way, so D doesn't work. Cool. And now all we need to do is pick a point. That's in that region, preferably on like on the edge of it, because it'll probably work for one of the answer choices, not for the other. So here we have, let's pick a point 794 1.0, because if that point is on the line 795 1.0, 794 1.0 should work. So our pick point will be 794 and then 1.0. And then just plug in 794 for, uh, for T, 1.0 for P, and see which inequality, which answer choice it holds true for in both inequalities. And we plug it in, B ends up being the one that works. Okay. 25. The system of equations above is graphed in the xy plane. At which of the following points do the graphs of the equations intersect? If they intersect, literally it means they cross at some point. At that point, they are equal. So what we're going to do is set these two equations equal to each other because they're both equal to y which means they're equal to each other so we've got uh, 2x plus 4 
equals x minus 3 times x plus 2. Uh, we can distribute that out. So 2x plus 4 equals x squared plus 2x minus 3x is minus x minus 6. Cool. Let's combine some like terms, shall we? So we've got x squared. Bring the 2x to the other side. Minus 3x. Negative 6 minus 4 is minus 10. Factor this bad boy. So we need to figure out what multiplies to negative 10. What well, adds up to negative 3. And well, do we have anything that does that? We do. We have x uh, minus 5 times x plus 2. So x could be 5 or negative 2. So A is gone, B is gone. So now what we can do is basically just plug in 5 and see what we get for Y. If we plug in 5, let's say for, into the first equation, 2 times 5 is 10, plus 4 is 14, so our Y coordinate has to be 14. 26. According to the model, at what speed in miles per hour does the car obtain its greatest gas mileage? So, what kind of equation is this? It's a quadratic. So how do we find the maximum value of a quadratic? What's that called? Vertex. And the formula for the x-coordinate of the vertex is negative b over 2a. Here, negative, the here the b value is 4, so it's going to be negative 4. The a value is negative 1 over 24. So if we calculate this, this is going to end up giving us an answer of 48. 27, the table above shows selected values for the function h. In the xy plane, the graph of y equals h of x is a line. What is the value of h of 8? Well, let's see. Is this linear? It is linear, right? So if it's a line, it has to be linear. So that means we can pretty easily figure out what h of x should be, what h of h should be. So notice when we go from 2 to 4, h of x goes from 7 to 11. So it for an increase in 2 and x, h of x increased by 4. So if we increase this by 2 again, at x equals 6, H will be 13. Sorry, x equals 6. H will be 15. And at x equals 8, it will be 19. So B is the answer. Great. Number 28. The front row of an auditorium has 10 seats. There are 50 rows in total. If each row has two more seats than the row before it, which expression gives the total number of seats in the last row. Okay, so let's picture what this would look like. The first row would have 10 seats. The next one, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Now this is the first row. This is the second, third, fourth, right, fifth, Sixth. So we see that with each row, we add two seats. We really started in the first row, right? We That was the first row that had 10 seats. But with each subsequent row, we added two more seats. We only had 49 more rows because the first row was also a row, right? We have 49 more rows to get to 50. We had two with each one. So we need 49 times 2 for those rows plus 10 in the original row. So that will give us answer choice A because 50 minus 1 is 49 times 2 is 98 plus 10 in the original row. Okay, number 29. An ecologist selected a random sample of 30 prairie dogs from prairie dogs from a colony and found that the mean mass of the prairie dogs in the sample was 0.94 kilograms with an associated margin of error of 0.12 
which of the following is the best interpretation of the ecologist's findings? A. All prairie dogs in the sample have a mass between 0.82 and 1.06. So from this, we can't tell whether every single one of them has it. We're not sure. So A is out. Most prairie dogs in the colony have a mass between 0.82 kilograms and 1.06 kilograms. Also can't really draw this conclusion. C. Any mass between 0.82 kilograms and 1.06 kilograms is a plausible value for the mean mass of the prairie dogs in the sample. Well, let's see. In the sample, actually, we're told that it's 0.94. That is the mean of the sample. So C doesn't work for that. D, any mass between 0.82 kilograms and 1.06 kilograms is a possible value for the mean mass of the prairie dogs in the colony. Yes. So the whole point of the margin of error is that you get a certain result for the sample. The margin of error basically states that when you extrapolate it to the entire colony, it might be that, but it also might be a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller. So basically, that's what D kind of says. So D is, has to be the answer. 30. A poster has an area for 32 square inches. The length X in inches of the poster is 6 inches longer than the width. Which of the following equations can be solved to determine the length of the in inches of the poster? Well, let's say the length is x. They told us that's six inches longer than the width, so the width is x minus six. Do so we find the area of a piece of paper's length times width? So x times x minus six has to give us four thirty-two. So the x squared minus 6x has to be 432, which is answer choice B. Okay, now we're on to the griddens. Let's see, number 31. If the absolute value of 2x plus 3 equals 5, and the absolute value of 3y minus 3 equals 6, what is one possible, possible value of the absolute value of xy? So in order to figure this out, we need to know the values of x and the values of y. So let's figure them out. So the first problem, absolute value of 2x plus 3 equals 5. So remember, with absolute value, we can solve for the positive and, and for the negative. So we can do this. 2x plus 3 equals 5. And 2x plus 3 equals <coughs> negative 5. If we solve the first one, that'll give us 2x equals 2 and x equals 1. If we solve the second one, that'll give us 2x equals negative 8 and x equals negative 4. Now let's do the same thing for the second equation. 3y minus 3 equals 6. And I'll put this over here on the top. 3y minus 3 equals negative 6, so 3y equals 9, y equals 3, and then the top one, 3y equals negative 3, and y equals uh, negative 1. So we have x equals 1, x equals 4, y equals 3, y equals negative 1, so really we can just multiply any x value with any y value, and then take its absolute value and get an answer. So, for example, 1 times negative 1 will give us negative 1. The absolute value of negative 1 is 1, so 1 is a possible answer. Um, your three possible answers will be 1, 3, 4, and 12. Okay. Number 32. The scatter plot above shows the revenue in millions of dollars that a company earned over several years in the line of best fit for the data. In year four, the difference between the actual revenue and the predicted revenue is N million dollars, where N is a positive integer. What is the value of N? Okay, so let's look at year four. At year four, the predicted increase looks to be about 50. 
and uh, I'm sorry, in, in year four, the predicted that revenue looks to be about 50. The actual revenue looks to be about 55. Now, obviously, it's not 100% certain that it's 55. So that's why they'll accept a few answers. They'll accept answers of four, five, or six. Number 33. The figure above is the floor plan drawn by an architect for a small concert hall. The stage has depth eight meters and two walls, each of length 10 meters. If the seating portion of the hall has an area of 180 square meters, what is the value of X? So let's see what they've given us. They've given us a bunch of numbers and they've given us an area of the seating port part. So let's figure out how do we calculate area, length times width, right? So length times width equals 180. And we already know that the length is X. So X times w equals 180 so we are missing this basically the width well can we do something to get the width yep uh check out this triangle at the top we can apply pythagorean theorem to it um, and this is actually pythagorean triple so if the height is eight the hypotenuse is 10 if you do a squared plus b squared equals c squared you'll find that this side right here will be six, which means that the big side in total, that the total width will be 12. So uh, X times 12 equals 180. So X equals 15. That's it. Okay, number 34. Jacob bought two types of pens, blue pens that cost 60 cents each and red pens that each cost D times as much as a blue pen as the cost of three blue pens and six red pens was 1080. What is the value of D? So all we really got to do here is set up an equation. So let's see three blue pens. That's three. So three blue pens. That's three times 0.6 D plus um, six red pens. So six times point. 60 times D equals 10.80. Do the math out. 1.80 plus 3.6 D equals 10.80. 3.6 D equals 9. So D equals 2.5. Okay, number 35. George took a nonstop flight from Dallas to LA, a total flight distance of 1233 miles. The plane flew at a speed of 460 miles per hour for the first 75 minutes and at a speed of 439 miles per hour for the remainder of the flight. To the nearest minute, for how many minutes did the plane fly at a speed of 439 miles per hour? So we, anytime you do this type of problem, speed, distance, type, speed, distance, time question, you're going to start with this equation. Speed equals distance over time. So in this case, it's 439 equals distance over T. Now we're looking for T, but we're missing D. So we need to get that D, which is the remaining distance from the flight. Uh, so let's figure it out. What other pieces of information do we, know, do we know? Well, we know he flew at 460 miles per hour for 75 minutes. 75 minutes in, an hour, in terms of hours will be 1.25 hours. So that distance that he flew was 575. But we don't care about that distance, right? We care about the remaining distance. So to get that, we need to do 1233, which is our total distance, minus the, that first distance, which gives us 658 as the remaining distance. Now we can plug that 658 back into this equation. So 439 equals 658 over T. And when we solve this for T, we get T equals 1.5.
However, that's, this is in hours. The question is asking us for minutes. So we have to multiply this by 60 to get our minutes, which gives us an answer of 90. Number 36, an arc of a circle measures 2.4 radians to the nearest degree. What is the measure in degrees of this arc? So to convert from degrees to radians, you multiply by pi over 180. And to convert from radians to degrees, you multiply by 180 over pi. So if we have 2.4 radians, 2.4 times 180 over pi. When we do this calculation out, we are going to get a decimal between 137 and 138. So they'll, they'll accept either answer. You can choose either 137 or 138 degrees. Number 37, if the length and width of the container base and the initial sketch were doubled, at most, how many more glasses could the new container hold? Well, how much does it hold right now? Length times width is 12 times 9. which gives us 108. So right now, the area is 108. But if we double both of these, let's say length new times width new, this will be 24 times 18, which gives us, let's see what it is. So 24 times 18 is 432. So this new area is four times the area of the original rectangle, which means that now the new one, the new base can hold four times as many glasses, which is 48. But the question is how many more glasses can it hold? So we need to take 48, subtract 12, and then we'll get 36. And finally, the last question, Kerry redesigned the container because the initial sketch did not account for cushioning material between the glasses. The area of the base of the newly designed container is 25% greater than the area of the base in the initial sketch. What is the area in square inches of the base of the newly designed container? All we got to do is take the original area, multiply by 1.25, and whatever we get will be our answer. And that is going to be... 135. And that is it. That was the calculator section. If you like this video and would like to see more, please remember to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below.